are listening to Jordan M, only the best gaming podcast on 91.1 WEDM. It's been a long time since I made an episode, I know, but fall break happened, and I was going to make more episodes. I, I promise I was going to, but uh, procrastination happened and uh, just um, didn't happen. However, now I now have to make an episode because, you know, it's for a grade, and I can't just, you know, not do it. So, I mean, I could... But it wouldn't be the smartest thing to do. I mean, I kind of want to graduate. So, I mean, I could probably graduate without the credit, but, you know, I, I kind of like radio. So, for the first episode going back, I'm going to revisit politics and war. I can already see you moving the mouse over to the pause button. No, do not press that button. If you did, well, I don't know what to tell you. If you didn't, hi, how are you? I hope you're having a good day so far. Okay, so today we have a few guests. Um, some of you are probably not going to introduce yourselves. Unless you want to. Anybody? I'm saying Bart here. Okay. And then we okay. have Sam Vaughn Jones. So I'm revisiting the the game again for two reasons. Uh, a, people wouldn't shut up about it. You know, a certain person named Frieza Son. Man, he's he's such a he's such a amazing guy, but you know. And B, there's a war going on. Like a big war. Like I like I mean everybody everything's going crazy. So, and in the last episode, I spoke a little bit about a little bit about treaties, an uh, optional defense, mutual defense, protectorates, and non-aggression. Well, apparently, a non-aggression treaty ended, so that means, by you know the community's log logic, we must now fight and kill each other, destroy orbits with nuclear radiation, and cause a 100% decrease in food production. Fake news stories where there's lies on either side, but the reporters won't come and ask you about it. Okay, I'll ask it down the line. Since I'm fairly new to the game, what is signif what is the significance of this war? I'm gonna start with El Bardo. Yo, um, so the significance of this war is probably just more or less upper tier drama. Um, the ongoing of upper tier drama. I mean, <laughs> the NAP and, and the number one alliance was the target, again. All right, so, I mean, who was the uh, number one alliance at that time? The, the Knights Radiant. The Knights Radiant, okay. And do people like the Knights Radiant? I mean, there's people that are going to like the Knights Radiant, and there's people that don't. So, I mean, that's kind of a uh, a general question, I guess, honestly, because <laughs> yeah, I think there was more people that didn't like them. You know what I mean? They mm -hmm. the question well. Okay. Um, what about you, Sam Von Jones? Well, uh, this doesn't demonstrate uh, BK's power, because BK is strong. Also, uh... <laughs> get Camelot into the like their first big war. That's what I've been told by the secret government of Camelot. Yeah, you very secret. Them, by the way. Yeah, you should join by the way, because they have the they're the best alliance in the game. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay. Um how does one keep track of the war and why does it matter to them, even if they're not a part of the alliance that's being attacked or is the attacker? El Bardo? You know all you gotta do is look at the, the alliance page first off. <laughs> Once the war started all the alliance ranks changed. So that's um, that's kind of obvious thing. Most people use these sheets and stuff like that to track the war, and I, I haven't been keeping track of the larger details of the larger alliances. To be honest with you. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Sam. Uh, I don't really keep track of the war. I just like uh, uh, if I really care about it, I just go ask some some random people. Yeah, asking random. other people does help. I mean, I, I I literally don't know at all whatever happens, so I just kind of I just kind of ask people around since I am a foreign affairs minister. So. Even though that's my job, I'm supposed to know things, but you know, I, I gotta, I gotta ask people because I have no idea what I'm doing. So, um, even if you do make number one in all alliances, well, in in, in any alliances that you are in, uh, what do you do after that? Do you technically win the game? No, I mean, up until a big non-aggression pack ends. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it depends. Uh, like in this game. There's there's always a target on the number one alliance's head. There's there's always a scheme on the number one alliance's head every time. Okay, and if you are like number one, uh, what can you do to keep the spirits to keep playing the game? Like I could feel it could get boring if you're like, okay, now I'm at the top and now I have non aggression pack. So um, what's the point in playing the game anymore? Like how would you how would you keep you know keep yourself pumped to keep playing the game? Uh, can I answer this one? Oh yeah, you can. Well, speaking from experience, uh, if you're already at the top, if you beat the game, basically, if you're the coolest guy around, 
right? Very friends, right? You want to go to uh, micro alliances, like small alliances, right? And you want to and you want to drop cash on them. Fund them. Make them like it. That's, that's... <laughs> drop cash yeah. on them. I mean, that sounds <laughs> that sounds legitimate. What about you, Alberto? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that I've I've already done before. I mean, even at times that I shouldn't have. You know, once you get to a moment where you're bored um, and things are set up, like say you're in your own alliance and you have things set up like aesthetic, uh, social games or whatever you do in your alliance, um, <laughs> from there it's all about the outer community. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get it. I get that. Um, are the news networks in the community fair? No. Nope. No? <laughs> It, 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 that's that depends, man. Depends. Okay. I mean, I mean, I mean the news that uh, that comes from the community is developed from the community. So I mean, it, you can you can really you can see what the community is like when you read into these news articles and when you read into the idealism behind whether or not they're true or false propaganda. You can see there's toxicity there. There's there's cancer here. So I mean, no, the news itself isn't necessarily <laughs> going to be fair. But, it, it, I mean, it's it's fair that it exists the way it does because this is the way the community is. That's uh, true. All, new, all news that says that BK is trash, uh, it's, it's false news. It's false news. <laughs> 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 um, do you think wars like these attract or deter new players? I don't really know. Um, I mean, you know, for players that are here, I could see it deterring them. You know what I mean? For players that aren't here, I could see it attracting them. So, I mean, I didn't join the game because it said politics and politics. Uh, you know what I mean? That's true. And, uh, um, yeah. On the topic of attracting and deterring, do you think the community in itself does the same thing? Like, um, you know, the way they talk, uh, how they are around, you know, newer members and things, do you think it would attract or deter them? Like, how friendly they are or... Um, or you know how toxic they are if they if they are you know you mean like like how the individual communities affect whether or not new players come into the game yeah basically like that yeah i mean to an extent your community on a personal level on a personal alliance level is going to affect players individually you know what i mean like but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to leave the game there's other places for them to go that are that are, that are acceptable or maybe more like-minded people for the individual. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but in general, if there's going to be a you know, general toxicity to the game's community, it's going to be difficult for newer players to want to come in and stay in. But I don't think that's this game's problem. This game is probably more or less just has its own acquired taste, honestly. Yeah, it did take me a while to um, get used to the game. It, it, seemed, it was very slow for me because I'm usually used to... Um, uh, really fast-paced games and uh, and other uh, simulations. So when I first got on here, I I kind of started and then I found out about the turn system. And I was like, okay, so what do I do? And they're like, you're gonna have to wait two hours for another turn. And I was like, okay, sure, I'll do that. And then I realized, you know, like how how long two hours is for a game. But I got used to it after a while. I mean, especially when it comes to wars. But eh, it's all right. What about you, Sam? What do you think? Well, I think uh, this game is really hard to start with if you don't have any friends who play this. Oh yeah, it was very hard when I started because I, I, I literally saw the ad on Facebook and I clicked on it and I was like, okay, I don't know what to do and there's nobody I know that's playing this game. So how am I, how am I going to get used to this? But I did and there was really friendly people. So, I mean, I was lucky. Some people wouldn't be lucky. This game differs too from from what, at least in my opinion um older games like this game you know cyber nations and things like that when i entered cyber nations i entered into an alliance that had they they, they tossed you into a detailed guide this weird little multi-article academy you know what i mean things like that but those types of things sort of that's that's it's that community that drew me to these types of games at that time you know what i mean mm -hmm. the fact that you guys had all these awesome and I'm going to air quote it, resources, you know, like the guides in the, in the academy. Um, those are the things that drew me in to that community, too. And from my memory playing Cyber Nation seven years ago, uh, every single uh, chance yeah. that I remember had that. This game, 
There's no there. This team, this team doesn't necessarily have that. You know what I mean? And not every single alliance plays into those awesome extra aesthetics. And, and the ones that do don't necessarily do so all that well, always, you know. So, I mean, like, that, I think, has a large effect on the game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you mean. Uh, what about you, Sam? What do you think? What's the question? Um, actually, no, wait. Oh, wait, we're, gonna, we're on the next question. <laughs> My bad. Okay. Um, I do come from a fairly toxic community, as you may all know, as uh, the dreaded League of Legends. And despite this, there's millions of players daily. For politics and war, though, it doesn't really seem to be the same. Uh, do you like the community where it's at, or would you uh, like people joining to create more, um, how would you say it, spice? Keep them, keep them coming. Keep them flowing in. Mm -hmm. like, keep, keep the game flavored. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, I, I miss things like valid CBs and, and, and academies and all that stuff, but uh, keep the dynamics changing. Why not? That's true. That's true. Um, I have done, uh, you know, invites to certain uh, friends and other things that might be interested in politics and war. Uh, sadly, some of them did go inactive, so they did get, you know, kicked from the alliances. But at that time, they really did enjoy it. I just think that they weren't used to the, the slower nature of it and how much they had to wait for it. And then, um, what do you think, Sam? Well, I think the game is good where it's at right now. I mean, uh, I probably Sheepy would uh, like more players because he's a, a greedy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he wants the money. But I, I think the the birth rate of new players and the, the death rate of the old players is, I think, at the perfect balance right now. That's understandable. I do understand that. Um, well, um, anybody else have anything to say before I, you know, end this podcast? It's, it's very, sh well, it's not very short. I think we've been at this for 10 minutes now, but... Anybody else have anything to say? Join Animation Domination. <laughs> join uh, join Camelot, Camelot Best Alliance. Very strong. I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna tell people to join the Hippo Gang. Oh, I, don't I don't know what that is, but do that then. Okay. Yeah, join yeah, the Hippo Gang. It's completely real. Uh, it's number fifty-two in the world. Well, zero in taxes. zero taxes, first fifteen city grants. <laughs> 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 and then he gets his money from other smaller alliances for protecting them. Uh, no, we don't know the no, protectorate. Bigger oh, bigger alliances, really? Yeah. Grumpy, <laughs> uh, Grumpy paid us recently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. And, and Yar. And who? And there's this Yar. There's this really cool guy in Yar. His name is Bresan. Man, he's very nice. He gave us like 500 million already. <laughs> Frieza san Oh, he sounds like such a cool dude. Uh, is, isn't yeah, he a part of Yar, like that retirement alliance? You know, the one that the way uses the cool one. Yeah, the cool one. The, yeah. uh, he's the only Yar member I know, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> There's like nine of them. <laughs> and he's probably he's probably the only one that I know. So I mean, I'm here with the leader of the Revolutionary Front. Um, her name is Jane. Say hello. Hello, and actually, I want to clarify. I'm the co-leader. Oh, I have a co husband that runs. Oh, yeah, I have a game husband that I run with. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Okay, so I'm gonna ask the same <laughs> questions that um, I asked the other group. Um, okay. How does one keep track of the war, and why does it matter to them, even if they're not part of the alliance that's being attacked, or is the attacker? Oh, okay. Well, this war is a little interesting in terms of keeping track of because it's literally the whole game versus like three or four, five alliances and their satellites. So um, I just happen to know who is at war with um, the TKR side because I know all the alliances that hate TKR. So it's really easy for me to be like, oh, yeah, they're at war. They're at war. They're at war. Um, sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, no, I, I was going to ask, like, why are there specific sides to the war? Why are there? Yeah. Ooh. Okay, um, my opinion is, is that there is a, you know, the EMC side, which is, stands for Easy Mode Coalition from way back in the day. Um, that's uh, the Knights Radiant, the Commonwealth, Guardian, and grumpy old bastards plus they're like little protectorates or whoever and then you literally have everybody else so that would be um iq cinesphere 
and the paperless, <clears throat> the paperless sphere. So they're all against EMC. Uh, the reason for that is um, there is a belief that can be, you know, backed up that TKR has, well, they've never lost a war one. They've been number one in this game for at least two years, so that gets super boring. Um, they also have, I don't know, they've just burned a lot of bridges over the course of their time in the game, especially the last two years, so they burned a lot of bridges and, you know, chickens are coming home to roost, as they say. <laughs> so, that's my opinion. Well, um, even if you do make number one in all alliances, and what do you do after that? Like, do you technically win the game, or and what's the point after it all? Good question. Uh, this game is weird that there is really no end game. There's no point in it. Um, you know, you get your nation the way you want. You find the community you want, and then that's the game. It doesn't. the The rankings are completely irrelevant to how good or efficient you know your alliances like the top 10 or the top 20 has not changed ever mm. or not ever but you know in quite a long time so and you know all these alliances aren't great you know they have you know leadership issues they definitely have you know membership issues blah 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 um however you will get to a point in this game where people will want to coast or they just want everything done for them, or whatever, 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 and they get comfortable. So that's why you have the same stagnant, you know, same 10 alliances in the top 10 all the time. So TKR getting down to number four, I guess they are now, is going to be irrelevant come when this war is over. They're going to be number one again as soon as they get rebuilt. Um, so it's not, I think a lot of people think that this war is just about to knock down TKR to number one, that's not it. It's to prove a point um, in a variety of ways. I know a lot of people were hitting Grumpy because Grumpy has this weird thing where they brag about having 30, like an average 30 cities. It's like, literally nobody cares. It's like, great, you know, there's however many of them that's 30 cities. So that means that they can't really interact with the game. They can't war, I mean, they can war, but it's not like a challenge by any means. So it's like a lot of people get tired of the bragging and the braggadocious and all this and that. So they're just getting tired of it, and they're like, "Let's go jump them," and they did. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and it's hard to be sympathetic. It's hard to be sympathetic. Yeah. But, <laughs> so, um, what do you? What can you do to keep the spirit to keep playing the game? Like, you know, since you're done, like, oh, I'm kind of bored. Like, I, yeah. I might just leave. What What would you do to keep the spirit up? <sighs> oh, um, this game primarily has players because of the individual pocket communities. Um, like for me, like there have been so many times I wanted to quit this game because it's, it can get boring. Are you, you know, it's, you can only do so much and you know, the graphics aren't that great. You know, there's a lot of, there are a lot of things wrong with this game. Like it does not, it's, it's just not the most perfect game. But, um, you know, if you find a group of friends that you really, you know, get down with and you're chill with, then that will make you stay. Like, that's my, that's been my experience, at least. Hmm, okay. That's understandable, actually. I, I do like that. Um, yeah. Are the news networks in the community, like, fair, even in the slightest? <laughs> um, are they fair? Which news? Because there's been quite a few and they pass and go and they die super fast. So which one are you talking about? Well, there is one, uh, Royal Orbis News, and... People look at that one a lot, and you know some of them, some of the members, some of the staff is um, uh, infamous with you know alliances like Camelot or uh, mm. Black Knights, and there was um, a dispute on who started who, uh, who, who started a fight with who when it came to Camelot and UH. So basically, that's that's what I mean by if they're fair or not. Probably not. No. I mean, there was um, a year ago, Ripper, who is the leader of Church of Spaceology, he ran what I believe to be the most impartial news source that the game has ever seen. Um, it was really well done. Um, you know, impartial just stated what was going on. It had interviews from both sides of, you know, whatever conflict. Um, Royal Orbis News, I can't say I'm very familiar with. I'm so sorry. I don't know. Like, I don't know these guys. I, I, my attention to 
things that are probably not like top 30 is not the best. Like my attention to what is the top 30 is already. Sh- so <laughs> what's, go- what's going on below, I'm not quite sure. So um, I've seen a couple things from Royal Orbis um, and that was I guess, their first two issues. And then I never went back because it was like, it was stuff I already knew, I guess. I don't know. So in terms of fairness, I don't know. I have no idea. I couldn't, I have no idea. I would, I, I would venture to say not. <laughs> because you know people's biases come in no matter you know what they're involved with but i would probably have to see stuff but i haven't okay that's understandable um do you think wars like these attract or deter new players Oof, that's a great question um oof. i would say overall because the game's mechanics are so f- that uh Wars, especially in long wars, will de- will make a lot of younger players, newer players delete because, you know, it's really easy to get rolled if you don't know what you're doing. And, you know, a lot of micros have like really oddly built nations and not, they're not making the money they could be making because, you know, they're just doing whatever. So if they get involved in a war because their protectors are in a war that it kind of gets to a point where you're just like getting rolled and getting punched and you can't get a break. So it'll make people want to stop. Um, however, I do think that there was a small part that, you know, really love the war part and they usually join, you know, raiding alliances like ARG used to be or Typhon used to be or whoever. Um, so I would say overall, big wars tend to get newer players gone more quickly but if you have a newer player that's been in the game long enough to realize like how to war, what like what to do, how to do it, whatever, what, whatever, then you're fine. But it's like that initial thing. Like any players that are coming in right now, I would be like, wait a minute, because this is gonna suck for you. Yeah, so it's <laughs> not gonna go well for you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, also, on the topic of attracting and, and deterring, do you think the community in itself does the same thing? Does what? Um, deter or attract players? Oof. <sighs> this community can be extremely bad. Like, they can be extremely unwelcoming, really just, like, out the gate calling you an asshole. <laughs> like, calling yeah. you stupid because you don't know, like, out the gate. So it kind of depends on your own tolerance. Um, you know, there are some players that are very welcoming on the forums. You know, they try to help you out. They try to, you know, not troll you but you know the community overall is like 98 percent ass to be honest so <laughs> so the, i would not rely on the overall um orbis community to keep to keep a player in i would rely more on that alliance that they're in and their community okay i understand that um i do yeah. come from a fairly toxic community as as you may know as league of legends and despite this there's millions of players daily for politics and war mm-hmm. though it doesn't seem to be the same do you like the community where it's at or would more people joining create more spice <sighs> um i don't know because you know the people that kind of play the same kind of games like nation sim games and text-based PC games kind of travel in the same circle, so I feel like it would be like same shit, different toilet, like the same kind of community, but like in a different platform. So okay, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I mean, my I'm a very misanthropic person, so my natural baseline is everybody sucks and they're going to be false to you. So I knowing the game and knowing the kind of people that are in it and that they know each other from another game from 15 years ago. It's literally the same core of people. So my initial thought would be no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, I think that's all the questions I have. I would like to thank you for, you know, popping in, wanting to help out. Cause it's yeah, for great. Sure. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, cool. Well, good luck. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. And I will see you all later. Bye-bye. Peace. Thank you all for listening in. I know this was a bit of a different one because um, it kind of sounded a bit different and I actually had, you know, people on a call. Um, I was at home actually and I recorded um, with a capture card and I used my own mic and everything. So a bit different than when I'm in the studio like this. But I really do hope that you guys still liked listening in. Um, 
it was it was an interesting experience to actually you know voice chat with some of the people that you know i know through you know just messaging through discord and um and you know like messing around with them and then i talked a bit with them after i recorded so and they were pretty cool people so um if you're you know interested in creating your own country or you know having you warring with other people just because you want to um this game i would suggest i would suggest it to you because you know uh why not it, there's no reason not to well i mean there is kind of reasons not to but there are reasons to play the game or at least try it out so i would definitely um you know go to politicsandwar.com you know make your own uh nation uh see what you like see what you uh think about it so anyways uh i'll be logging off here so i'll see you all in the next episode Bye bye <laughs>